do you have any thoughts on how the Steelers might want to respond uh, in the wake of what's going on in the NBA and baseball? Um, you know, we, we just got done having, you know, like Bert said, a team meeting, and then we had some league-mandated stuff to talk about. Um, Coach Tomlin addressed with the team um, briefly about some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, I, I don't know that, uh, you know, it, the practice was never, it was like we voted on anything. It just, uh, we anticipate going out to practice at normal time. Uh, we have unique days today and tomorrow with kind of a night before the game um, type situations with mock games and stuff tomorrow. So um, as of now, uh, we, we're, we're all moving ahead as, as scheduled. Next one, Jerry Dulac. Jerry, go ahead. Hey, Ben. Um, good morning. I'm um, curious, uh, you know, a lot of um, stars in other sports, guys who are maybe used to adulation, have talked about the lack of spectators has, you know, uh, been, been, been hard for them to get extra motivated. Do you anticipate that being any problem when you guys start playing for you personally, maybe? It's going to be different. Um, you know, I know we, we had our kind of practice the other night with the, the, the kind of fake crowd noise, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't excited to run out of the tunnel after last year uh, at Heinz Field. I mean, there's, there's nothing better. Uh, and I'll, I'll never be able to put it into words and describe um, to someone that hasn't been able to do it um, what it's like to run out of that stadium uh, here at home with the fans screaming and going nuts and, uh, the terrible towels waving. And so I was, I was looking forward to that. Um, obviously that's going to be different now, but, um, and, and playing as long as I have, I mean, it's going to be a unique situation, you know, whether there's a few fans or no fans, I mean, I'm not really even sure what's going to happen yet. So, um, all that being said, after missing last year, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to be happy to be on the field playing a game. Next up, Joe Rudder, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, Ben, uh, you went uh, pretty heavy the first week there. Uh, I think it wasn't until uh, Monday, I guess you took some time off. I guess that's an indication your elbow feels good. And, uh, you know, how has it gone, you know, working as much as you have? Yeah, it's felt really good. Um, you know, we've always, for the last, you know, handful of years, we've kind of done, a, uh, done the same routine with a full day, half day, off day. Um, and I even went three days in a row last week. And, um, you know, it's been feeling really good. I, I definitely need to to give it some time um, to, to rest that kind of one day off every so often, uh, just out of general fatigueness and soreness. Um, but it, it's amazing how fast it bounces back and feels great the next day. So uh, I feel very confident going into a regular season schedule where we get, you know, Tuesdays off and Friday's a half day, Saturday's a, a travel type day. So those kind of um, scheduled days off uh, throughout the regular season, I, I think are going to be perfect. Next up, Brooke Pryor. Brooke, go ahead. Hey, Ben, I know you used your platform recently at a men's conference over the summer to talk about issues that are bigger than football. And with yesterday being a significant day in sports activism, what do you think the role is of athletes to use platforms to amplify causes and, and things that are bigger than the sport? Well, I think each athlete and each person, whether it's a coach or whoever it is, um, you know, has the choice to, to choose uh, to what level, to what degree they want to use their platform. Um, I think the, the biggest thing right now is to, um, for, for me specifically, is to listen um, to my African-American teammates and friends um, that aren't even in football, just to get a better understanding um, to educate myself. Next up, Dale Lawley. Dale, go ahead. Hey, Ben, we've, we've seen you throw on back-to-back -back days. We've seen you, you know, throw on the run and do all these things, seeing you throw deep balls, throw with a good sip on it. Is the last hurdle in your mind actually playing a game? Yes, and, and trying not to be too nervous. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've noticed, it's funny because I've talked to Coach uh, Randy and Coach Tomlin a little bit. When we've done um, some two-minute drills against the defense, I've actually felt like, like the jelly kind of legs. Like I felt nervous out on the practice field, which I've never felt before. Uh, maybe not for a long time, but um, so I know if I'm if I'm nervous out there on the practice field right now that that the game's gonna it's gonna be a different feeling, and so um, that I think is gonna be the last hurdle. And getting hit, you know, I've um, tried to talk TJ and some of those guys to just give me little bumps every once in a while, but no one will do it. But uh, getting hit and, and and calming the nerves are gonna be big ones for me. Next up, Mark Caboli. Mark, go ahead. 
Hey, Ben, over this past week or so, has there been any throw that you made and said to yourself, well, I wouldn't have been able to make that last year? Or conversely, is there any throw that you've made so far that said, yeah, that needs that needs some work still? Um, I don't I don't think so, because I, it wasn't like I wasn't able to make the throws last year as much as it was the, the pain maybe that I had after making them or the discomfort uh, the following day or things like that. So. Um, I, I think I feel really good in making some of the, the deeper down the field throws. Um, you know, I was uh, one of the practices, I think last week, um, I, I kind of, I wasn't able to step into it and I threw a, a go ball down the left sideline and I, I just, it felt like when it came off my hand, it was going to be short and I ended up making it there in stride. So I, I was pleasantly surprised with kind of um, how, how the arm, how my arm strength has kind of come back. What I think maybe even a little better than, than it was before. Aditi, you're up next. Go ahead. Hey, Ben, uh, I would argue that you are the single most popular athlete in the state of Pennsylvania, or the most famous face in the state of Pennsylvania. And right now, you can, I don't, are you, you look like you're going to disagree with me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so we have seen multiple teams now, four teams cancel practice to sort of have conversations. We've seen LeBron James, a very famous athlete, wonder if, you know, playing makes sense. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. What do you think is the smartest thing for you specifically and the Steelers to do? Well, I think we need to educate, educate ourselves. Um, specifically, I, I would like to educate myself and, and that's why I say I'm listening. And I think listening is such an important thing to do um, because obviously I, I look different than a lot of my teammates and a lot of my friends. And so um, how can I better educate myself and listen and learn um, because we all need to do and be better. Next up, Albie. Albie, go ahead. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Good, Albie. Um, ben, not just yourself, but the team, uh, because of the way training camp has been, I, I, I keep asking this question to different people. How, I, I know it's different, but how is, what's different in training camp and, and, and what was different leading up to training camp going to affect the quality of play. Do you feel that you guys are as much up to speed as you would in a normal camp up at St. Vincent? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I think um, as much as you can be, right? I mean, without the OTAs, I think the, in the mini camps, I think um, the biggest thing is going to be young guys, right? Um, guys that have never had that experience of playing an NFL game. I had a young running back come up to me, uh, a rookie running back come up and say, I think I had my first aha moment in the NFL. He tried to bounce a, a run outside and was easily kind of two hand tagged um, down. And I said, well, what, what was that? He said, I, I tried to bounce it like I could in college and they, they caught me. And I said, yep. I said, that's, that's the NFL for you. I said, it's, everyone's a lot faster and bigger and stronger and it's not as easy to make things happen like that. So just those kind of, um, you know, the, the lack of that repetition for, for young guys, I think will be big. Um, I, I think where we might have an advantage over some teams is I, I'd like to think because we have more of a veteran team, veteran coaching staff, things like that. Uh, I'd like to think that maybe we have um, you know, not as much behind the eight ball as, as other teams maybe are. Up next, Missy Matthews from Steelers Media Productions. Missy, go ahead. Hey, Ben, Chase Claypool keeps popping up on the practice report. Coach Tomlin said he and Alex Highsmith are proving that they belong. What's most impressive about each of those guys? Well, I, I always get caught trying to spread too much praise to rookies because I want them to sneak up on other people. But it doesn't look like um, Chase is going to be able to sneak up on anybody right now because people are talking about him, and, and deservedly so. Um, he's just making plays. Um, I think – the plays that he's making are impressive, but I think to me, the more impressive is that he doesn't ask a lot of questions, uh, which means he knows his stuff. I, I can change a play with a hand signal or, um, or, or, or call a different play at the line of scrimmage. And he, and I always check him like, are you good? And he's like, I, I got it. And so I, I think that is, is just very, very impressive from a quarterback perspective that uh, as much as we've thrown at him, um, he's able to digest it. And he, not saying he doesn't make a mistake, but when he makes a mistake, it's not he's not making the same mistake twice. And so I just think that's really impressive. Next up, Rich Walsh. Rich, go ahead. Hey, Ben, you talked about being motivated and, and winning a couple more Super Bowls and trying to get back to where you, to where you were before. 
Uh, I wanted to ask about some of your teammates. Juju talked about you being back on the field and maybe your presence being out to practice and getting this team ready. Do you feel the the energy with those guys or the the motivation that that they want to play more for you? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess I don't. I hate to say that guys want to like uh, for me to say that guys want to play for me. I think could sound self centered a little bit, but I think we're all excited to play for each other. I think we all. Um, I know I missed out on last year, and I think um, guys that I've just enjoyed playing with over the years, um, and some longer than others, but uh, we have a lot of fun on the football field together. And so I think we're all looking forward to, to getting back out there together and doing it together and kind of showcasing what we hope everyone knows that we can do. Next up, Will Graves. Will, go ahead. Hey, Ben. Um, I asked Cam this a couple months ago. I'm just curious, have you guys talked about ways you might approach any sort of demonstrations during the games to sort of avoid obviously what happened in Chicago. And I mean, have, I know we're, we're only two ish weeks out, I guess, from things getting started. Have you guys started having those discussions and, and how do you do it? You know, when there's so much more, you know, room for athletes to speak now than even there was three years ago. Yeah. Um, Kevin, I have not, we haven't discussed that yet. I think we have some time, I, like you said, there's a couple of weeks out. So I'm sure, um, you know, it'll be more than just Cam and I. There's, there's a lot of people that, that need to, um, you know, be heard. Uh, and, and we've got a lot of great leaders in this team. So uh, we will all, I'm sure, uh, have discussions as it gets closer. Next up, Chris Adamski. Chris, go ahead. And does taking the year off maybe make you want to play longer? Do you have a timetable in your head to play in a 40, win in another Super Bowl? Did you, did you see in Brady and Breeze and, and Rivers and those guys still playing? Is that lasting them or, or seeing them have success in their 40s uh, motivate you at all? Well, I'm not worried about those guys. I mean, each person's kind of different. Um, each person has different motivations uh, in terms of their body, their family, um, focusing on winning championships. That's what we all want to do. And so, um, I'm just excited to have the opportunity to play this year. Um, after missing last year, I can really only focus on this year because um, you, you realize that you can't look past it. You can't look past one game and one play. So to me, I want to give everything I have this year um, and, and just really enjoy it um, because I didn't get to last year. A few more questions. Next up, Brian Batko. Okay. Um, yeah, it was mainly just uh, about James Washington. You know, you tried to – further your rapport with him as a rookie. Um, and then you kind of just get to sit back and watch him last year and his progression. What have you seen out of his development in this receiver room as a guy going into year three? Yeah, I think James um, has done amazing things. I think to me, the biggest thing that I've seen is his growth and the understanding of the offense and his conditioning. His conditioning is like, um, like no one I've ever seen before. Follow up question from Mike Pursuta. Mike, go ahead. And um, Fitzpatrick says the only time the offense makes a play is when the defense screws up. Watts said they're making life miserable for you guys. Who's winning 11-on-11? 11 11? Defense. All right, follow-up question from Mark Caboli. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Ben, uh, you released your docu-series yesterday. It seems like something that – you've tried to stay away from over your career? Did somebody twist your arm or why did you decide to do that? Um, you know, my agent Ryan has, has tried for a long time to get me to just do something. And as you guys know, I'm a very private person and, and I like to keep it that way. And when this injury happened, um, my wife and I kind of started documenting things on our phone just because we knew uh, this is a unique situation and a unique journey that we were about to go on, uh, potentially career threatening, obviously. And so um, there were some big hurdles that we were going to have to face. And so we started videoing on our phone and um, thought it was kind of cool. And so we just um, decided to, from there, to, to take it more professional, I guess, if you will, and really professional by that, which means we had a, a couple friends that, that decided to help us out and basically one of the, the main producer guys, one of my dearest friends, had two months to put it together, and I think he did a pretty darn good job. So um, just thought it was something unique that we could let people get a little bit of uh, insight into to the journey back. Two more questions. Aditi, go ahead. Ben, you have some new coaches on offense. Uh, 
Coach Hilliard, your quarterback's coach, is there, are there more voices as you are putting together your offense right now? Do you feel like you're diversifying a little bit? Are you growing as an offense in that sense, schematically? Yes, I, I believe so. I think Coach uh, Canada is bringing in a lot of um, uniqueness in the run game. Um, and I think that uh, Coach Hilliard, with both his playing and coaching experience, is able to bring in some things in the past game uh, in terms of schemes, in terms of new plays. So uh, it's fun to to kind of pick their brains uh, and what they've done in the past and what they've seen and, and kind of infuse it into our offense that we've already had. So uh, we'll definitely see some some different things this year. Okay, final question. Joe Rutter. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, Ben, on your documentary, you, you said about you know, your, your elbow and kind of feeling like, I guess, a dull ache for years, I guess maybe going back to your rookie season, is that totally going away now? Is that any issue at all? No, I have no, no dull aches, no pains. Like I said, if I throw two or three days in a row real heavy, I'll just get some fatigue, but I think that's pretty normal. And so uh, no more sharp pains or dull pains or anything in that elbow. So I'm, I'm very thankful um, for that.